I'm Elaine, welcome to my channel. Make sure that you're subscribed to get reminders every Friday to stretch. Today we'll be doing a climber's mobility routine. I've also created a hip mobility routine for climbers, so make sure you go and check that out. Without further ado, let's get started. We'll start this routine by warming up our wrists, drawing five circles in one direction and five circles in the other direction. Next, we'll place our hands on the ground with our fingertips facing away, shifting our body forward to feel the stretch along our forearms. Breathe, shifting your weight a little bit forward to deepen the stretch. Next, we'll place our hands on the ground with our fingertips facing towards us. Sitting back onto our heels to feel a stretch on the front part of our forearms. Breathing into the stretch. Next, we'll lift our palms off the mat three times for some wrist strengthening exercises. Now slowly peeling our palms and fingers off the mat. Shaking out our hands a little bit. For the next stretch, we'll place our left hand onto the mat in a fist position, rolling outwards, feeling the stretch on the outside of our wrists. With our right hand, we'll gently hold onto our left fist. Hold and breathe. Now repeating on the other side, we'll place our fist on the mat, rolling outwards, using our other hand to deepen the stretch. Hold and breathe, feeling the stretch on the outer wrist. Now we'll clasp our hands together and draw five circles in one direction and five circles in the other direction. Next, we'll move into a chest stretch by placing our hands behind us and pressing our chest forward and up towards the ceiling in a scooping action. Drawing our shoulder blades together as we continue to push forward and up, feeling the stretch in our chest. Next, we'll be doing eagle arms, bringing our left arm underneath our right with our palms pressed against each other. If this is too difficult, keep your hands in a fist position, feeling the stretch in our upper backs. Breathe keeping our elbows lifted and pressing our forearms and hands against each other. This one should feel amazing for the upper back. Now we'll add a twist by looking over our left side. Using our exhales to twist a little bit further.
We'll repeat the stretch on the other side by bringing our right arm under our left for eagle arms. Pressing your hands against each other or keeping your hands in a fist position. Feeling the stretch along our backs. Continue to press your forearms against each other to deepen the stretch. Now, we'll add a gentle twist by looking over to the right side. Feeling a stretch in our spines. Using our exhales to twist a little bit further. Next, we'll stretch our shoulders by reaching behind our back with our left hand. Using our right hand to deepen the stretch. Breathe, feeling the stretch run along your shoulders. We'll add a side stretch here by bending over to the right side and feeling the stretch run along the sides of our bodies. Now, we'll move on to the next side by reaching our right hand down our backs, using our left hand to help reach a little bit further. Now, we'll be adding a side stretch, tilting over to the left side feeling the nice stretch down along the sides of your body. Next, we'll cross our left leg over our right, gently hugging our leg in towards our body. As we twist towards the left side, Feeling the stretch in our glutes and in our spines. Repeating the stretch on the next side, we'll swing our right leg over, hugging our knee towards our body. as we look towards the right side. Next, we'll move into a seated position with our hands behind us. Warming up our shoulders by lifting our hips off the ground. Repeating this two more times, really pressing the ground away from us to feel our shoulders. Now, we'll shift our butt towards our heels for a deep shoulder stretch, keeping our chest lifted. Adding a few windshield wipers with our legs by shifting our knees from side to side. Going as little or as far as you would like. On the next exhale, we'll shift our butts back 
and give our thighs a nice hug to round out our spines. For the next stretch, we'll reach your right arm over to grab the outside of our left foot. Imagine someone pulling your arm forward. You should feel the stretch all along your upper right back. Pressing down against our fingers to deepen the stretch. Now we'll repeat the stretch on the other side by reaching our left arm over to grab the outside of our right foot. On the exhale, pressing our fingers downwards as if we're pressing down against a pedal to feel the stretch all along our left upper back. Now we'll slowly roll out our shoulders and make our way into a wide-legged child's pose, spreading our knees to either side of the mat as we stretch our arms out in front of us. Inhale and exhale. Think about pressing our armpits down towards the mat. It may feel good here to shift back and forth, noticing how the stretch changes in your armpits. Here, we'll slowly press back into a downward facing dog, pedaling out our feet a few times. Think about pressing through your shoulders, really pressing your hips back into your hip sockets as much as you can. It's okay if you can't keep your legs straight. Our goal is to bring our stomachs as close as we can to our thighs. Now we'll move on to a puppy pose by stacking our hips over our knees and extending our hands forward trying to lower our chest onto the mat. Go as far as you can. Think about really engaging the shoulder blades and using your chest to press through the ground and forward. This will help you engage your upper back. For another variation of the puppy pose, you can clasp your hands together using our elbows to support us as we continue to lower our chest onto the ground, feeling a deep opening in our shoulders. Continuing to breathe. Now, we'll draw our shoulder blades together and gently make our way on all fours. We'll be doing a thread the needle stretch by threading our right arm over to the left side and resting our right shoulder onto the ground. You should feel the stretch in your upper back in a gentle spinal rotation. Breathe, using our left hand to press down against the mat, opening up the chest. Now we'll make our way up and repeat on the other side by threading our left arm through to the right side and resting our shoulder onto the mat. Continuing to breathe, feeling the stretch in your upper back. Next, 
Next, we'll be doing a few scapular push-ups on our knees, making sure that our shoulders are aligned to our wrists. Then we'll press up through our palms to create space between our scapula, repeating this motion a few times. Next, we'll be doing some hip tucks, bringing our right leg forward in a 90 degree angle. We'll tuck our hips in to feel the stretch along our hip flexors. Continue to tuck your pelvis in, feeling the stretch on the top side of the hips. Next, we'll walk our right leg forward into a low lunge. Adding a side stretch, we'll reach behind our back and stretch towards the right side. Holding for a few breaths. Now we'll add a twist by placing our hands in prayer and twisting towards the right side. Now we'll shift ourselves back and repeat this stretch on the other side. Bring our left leg forward, making sure that our knees are aligned with our ankles as we begin to tuck our hips forward. Actively tucking our hips two more times to really feel our hip flexors. Next, we'll bring our left leg forward into a low lunge, again making sure that there's alignment from our knees to our ankles. We'll reach behind our backs with our right arm and add a side stretch. Now we'll place our hands in prayer and twist towards the left side, keeping our gaze faced up towards the ceiling. Now we'll gently release. Next, we'll be doing a froggy stretch. Here, we'll be rolling up both sides of the mat to help protect our knees. For this variation, we'll keep our feet close together and our knees apart. Keeping our core engaged, meaning that there shouldn't be an arch in your lower back. We'll be walking our forearms to one side, feeling the stretch deepen in one hip flexor. Breathe and continue to keep your core engaged. Now we'll be walking over to the other side, feeling the stretch shift. We'll repeat this stretch one more time on both sides, walking our forearms over to the other side. 
Practicing the froggy stretch is so helpful for climbing, especially if you're looking to reach higher footholds and to be able to press your hips closer towards the wall. Walking once more to the other side. Breathing and just noticing how the stretch feels for your body today. Now we'll slowly make our way out of this stretch and roll out our mats. We'll extend our right leg straight with our foot flexed towards the ceiling and our back toes tucked walking forward with our hands to feel how the stretch shifts and then walking our hands back feeling the stretch deepen we'll be walking forwards and back a few more times pausing just for a moment when you feel the stretch the most We'll repeat the stretch on the other side by extending our left leg straight, toes pointed towards the ceiling, and our back toes tucked. Walking forward and back, pausing just for a moment when you feel the stretch the most. Be sure to keep your core engaged the entire way. Feeling the stretch deep in your hamstrings and your inner thighs. Next, we'll move into a hip stretch by pressing our elbows against our knees and shifting back and forth. Now we'll widen our stance into a wide-legged forward fold, holding onto our elbows as we move back and forth. Breathing and feeling the stretch in our hamstrings. Now we'll place our hands on the ground and step on top of our fingers with our toes, straining out our legs a few times here. And we'll slowly roll ourselves up one vertebrae at a time. We're done this routine. I hope that you enjoy this climber mobility routine. If you're looking to improve your hip mobility, I have a video specifically for climbers that you can check out on my channel. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a like and leave me a comment if you'd like to see more climber specific videos. Stretch again soon. Bye.